When life hands you lemons, you have to make lemonade. And so today's video is just gonna be some updates on the current works in progress and a couple of items that never made it into any of the videos. I'll start with something where I spent a lot of time and efforts, but I never got the opportunity to put it in any of the videos so far. You may remember that in a previous video I talked about installing an inboard motor with a stern drive into the big barge boat. Well, earlier this year I actually got a huge powerful diesel engine together with a stern drive capable of handling this power. The motor is a German-made Henschel 523, a straight six-cylinder diesel engine with a ridiculous 12 liter of displacement, a very adequate 230 horsepower and a whopping 620 pound-feet of torque. For comparison, the latest Corvette Z06 with its 670 horsepower only develops about 460 pound-feet of torque. It came with a shuttle transmission and a so-called Centamax coupling. I had it converted to an electric starter motor instead of a pneumatic one and I had a custom flange built to connect it to the stern drive. The stern drive was made by the British company Silet. I bought it second hand of course and I was told that this kind of stern drive is reserved for purchase by big shipbuilding companies only. Now the reason I decided against installing this engine is that I deemed it too difficult and too risky that something would go wrong which I wouldn't be able to fix before my lease comes to an end here at this marina. But I don't regret having made this choice, because right now I am very confident that I can install two outboard motors, that they will work perfectly with this boat and that I can do it within the time frame that I have. So even though it was quite painful to make this decision, sometimes when working on such big projects, that's just what you have to do in order to prevent greater damage in the future. I did however get the chance to see if it's at least turning freely. Now the wires I'm using here are way too thin, so not enough power can get to that huge starter motor during my little tests here. But that doesn't matter. The motor turns and with that I'm happy. Now all I have to do is to find a suitable boat where to put it in. Next some updates on the steel yard, specifically on the shower cabin that I'm building. Besides making some fine adjustments on various boards, I'm still waiting for the varnish on the remaining wooden boards to cure so that I can finally put everything back together. So far, I've already installed permanently some of the larger boards. I put back the filters for the water system. I've installed a purifying UV light where water flows through a tube with a 17 watt UV light which is supposed to kill all bacteria in the water that's flowing through. I've put back the floorboards in the shower cabin, hopefully for the last time. I'm using spare pieces of wood to create spacers in order to get a subtle slope into the floor. I put a plexiglass window into the service hatch. I'm using this polyurethane based adhesive to glue the window into the door frame. Here I put some more spacers to create that subtle slope. A quick test to see if the water is actually running down. And with that, the floorboards are pretty much finished. I got a roll of 3mm thick neoprene film, which I'm using to insulate the remaining parts in the ceiling, so I can put the ceiling plate in. And I'm working on some smaller details such as building a handle with an integrated button to flush the toilet.
I'm trying out different dimmers for the LED lights that I'm gonna install. But I don't want to spill all the beans just yet, so let's wait for the next video to see these works to completion. My favorite thing in the world is to make other people happy. And so recently I took my Anchor powerhouse to a little park, I brought my DJ equipment and my coffee machine with the mission to spread some good vibes and maybe put a smile on people's faces. And so while I was playing some smooth Sunday afternoon beats, my wife was busy handing out free coffee. Let's not forget that all of this was made possible by the Anchor Powerhouse, which, if you think about it, is absolutely nuts. I mean, this thing actually replaces a generator, and it does so in complete silence with the ability to replenish its energy from the sun. After an entire afternoon of making music and running the coffee machine probably two dozen times, the charge only went down about 20%. So yeah, I'm impressed. Next I'm gonna show you how I started to install my new bow thruster. This is a MaxPower CT225. It runs on 24 volts and is capable of delivering up to 440 pounds of thrust. I am forced to install it on the outside of the hull for two reasons. For one, it seems to be impossible to find an affordable steel tube suitable to work with this bow thruster. For another, I need to install it at an ideal distance of 185 millimeters below the waterline which in my case can only be achieved by placing it on the outside of the hull. So I got this so-called stern adapter, which I'm going to repurpose to function as a tube for my bow thruster. Here I made the mistake to start cutting out a piece of that fin, which resulted in a bunch of unnecessary cutting and grinding, but more on that in a moment. So the mistake that I made was to try and remove the root part of that fin, which I hoped I could achieve by cutting away those 8 steel rivets that were holding that part in place, then cutting down all the way to the hull, and peeling it off with chisel and hammer, but I quickly learned that I would get nowhere with that plan. So let's leave this for now. Because the hull is curved, I'm gonna need to create a flat base where the stern adapter can attach to. For this I had a 5mm thick steel flap profile bend to the outer diameter of the stern adapter's flange. I then decided to make it slightly bigger, so I had to first extend it with a little piece of steel. At first I'm just gonna make 4 point welds, because I want to practice my welding a little before welding together these pieces. Next I'm gonna cut out a disc with the same outer diameter out of 5mm sheet steel. To have a good contact between the nozzle of the plasma cutter and the steel, I'm gonna retrace the line with the angle grinder. I'm starting more and more to get a feel for how to use the plasma cutter, so other than a little bit of a rough start, I didn't have any major issues while cutting this disc. Now as I'm cutting the outer border, you can see that the cut is already much cleaner. This is simply due to me handling the device slightly better than before. Alright, so here's our cutout disc. For the most part, I managed to get clean cuts. Here, something went totally wrong, I'm not sure what. In some areas, my angle was totally off. But again, overall, it's very acceptable. With the two parts for the flange mount finished, and after double checking that it fits perfectly onto the stern adapter, 
I can now cut a hole into the hull by simply tracing a line around that steel ring I made earlier. First I draw a line with a sharp metal object, in this case a kitchen knife. Next I deepen the line with the angle grinder. Next I cut out the circle with the plasma cutter, cutting from both sides at the same time to not overheat the material too much in one area. After making sure that the cut went through and through all around the circle, I move back outside to cut the root of the fin exactly at the circumference of the circle. In hindsight I realized that that's what I should have done right from the start, meaning first cutting the circle and then cutting the root of that fin. At the end, just a few cordial words from the negotiator. And then the hole is done. Right now, let's move back to the steel yacht, where, about a year after installing it, I finally hooked up the water boiler. I wired it directly to the AC Out 2 on our Victron Quattro, which only gives out power either when shore power or the generator are connected. Of the remaining two unused breakers, I'm gonna use one for AC power to the aft cabin and the other one to connect the water boiler to the AC Out 2. Now I can hook this up to one side of the breaker. Next I'm gonna connect the boiler to the other end of that breaker. First I have to feed the AC wire through to the Victron Quattro. Connect it to the other side of the breaker. And then finish by wiring up the water boiler. And with that, the electrical part is all done. Now I can open up the valve to let in the cold water. And what you hear there is the compressor pump from the accumulator tank filling up to 60 liters to the water boiler. Next I have to let out some air trapped in the hot water line. And then, after just 30 to 45 minutes, the water came out steaming hot. Now, all that's left to do is to fix up the shower fixtures to that hot water line, and then we can make use of our water boiler on a daily basis. And that's all the time we got for today. If you haven't yet, join the My First Boat community on Facebook or find us on Instagram. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.